Yeah, no, I'm happy to jump in Let's right now you. if I can. Yeah. And sure. just to let you know, um, there is a town council meeting that I'm not um, central to, but I am. I do want to see that meeting. So if there's anything, um, any questions you, you the commission has about uh, the conservation restriction on 910 Southeast Street, I'm happy to jump back into the meeting. Aaron could just text me. That would be good. Okay, because that's, be yeah, that's thank coming you. up in a little bit. But very quickly, a um, couple of uh, updates for the commission. As you know, we are looking for an assistant land manager. Uh, I, I think I announced that at your last meeting a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Tyler Pease is moving on to uh, other professional pursuits. So if you know anybody, the job is open. It's a great introductory uh, uh, position to, um, to land conservation and conservation management. So the job is posted on the town website. We also have a planner position uh, open in our planning department. So. Uh, if you know anybody, uh, recent graduates included, um, please send them our way. So um, absolutely. Um, let's see, um, a couple of other updates. I am anxious. I know we, we, you all have been busy and Aaron has been just uh, um, just, just uh, everywhere, it seems, these past couple of weeks. But I am anxious to get going on the... Uh, um, you know, the land management work and the subcommittee that uh, you all formed. And I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if we have a first meeting time for that group, Aaron, yet, or that's something you're working on with a couple of the commission members. Mm, yeah, we. Um, it's not set yet. I'm still updating the land use policy with the edits. But um, yeah, I'd say in the next two weeks, I'd like to have a date set and things a little bit better organized to get rolling. Um, okay. I'll make a note for myself about that. Yeah, that'd be great. I will say that um, it's always about this time of year. Um, there there are, uh, and again, this is somewhat, it's related to the land management policy and, and, and work we're going to be talking about, but we do have a couple of um, instances out there in the field where uh, people have uh, licenses or leases on town conservation land. And it's really time to kind of revisit those. It's been a long time since we've looked at those carefully and we've got such a great commission right now. It it might be good to look at those this summer and really see where we are, which ones have expired, which ones we want to continue. Um, and I'm thinking of, you know, agricultural practices at, at Amethyst Brook, uh, Station Road Farms, uh, some things going on at Atkins Flats with with farming and equestrian um, uh, activities. Wow. So, um, you know, we're we're a little behind on on taking a fresh look at those. So, um, uh, for those of you interested, we can kind of uh, 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 pull those out for you and and get get cracking on that. Um, let's see. Um, oh, I'm sorry, that would also include Mount Pollux. Um, Mount Pollux is a lot of interest in, um, you know, the, the conservation plan and the management plan for Mount Pollux. So um, I have certainly made some promises to the abutters and, and people who love Mount Pollux. And I feel as though it's been too long through the pandemic that we haven't uh, act, acted on some of those uh, those management objectives in that in that plan. So things, even simple things like getting new kiosks up, populating kiosks around town with new information, new maps. It's just one of these time consuming things that um, uh, Aaron and I have not, and Brad have not had time to get to. So I'd like to, to do some catch up this summer. Um, let's see, we're also hiring summer staff. So if you know any folks who would like to work with the conservation department at Puffer's Pond on trails, um, Brad is gonna be, uh, a one-person show for a little while. We're going to try to keep Tyler on. Um, he's he's willing to to help us a little bit throughout May and June, maybe into July. So we'll do the best we can with that. But um, we do need to hire some some summer crew to work on the trails. So by all means, if you know anybody, again, it's on the website and they could apply. And we're starting interviews for those positions next week. They're anywhere from twenty to forty hours, flexible. Weekends are great because we can get Puffer Spawn uh, coverage. We're also going to be working a little bit with the Crest team. Uh, this is our new alternative uh, police respond, response and community response uh, department. And they're interested in helping us with kind of meeting and greeting at Puffer's Pond. 
Um, so uh, that could not, it won't be seven days a week, but it might be some Saturdays during the summer, some Sundays during the summer. And we'll do our, our tent, kind of meet and greet tent there at the main part of the beach. And I think the only other last update I'll share with you is I did have a rather last minute, uh, at least for your process, request. Um, and I want to get the name of the group right here. The Western Mass Technical Rescue Team, which is based out of Northampton, uh, contacted me in the last 24 hours or so um, requesting um, um, uh, um, permission to use Puffer's Pond on the 16th. They would like to set up on the North Beach and do basically do some scuba diving and some simulated uh, rescue. And this is something that we do through the uh, Amherst Fire Department. Uh, as you may know, the Amherst Fire Department does uh, ice rescue there during the winter. Um, and given that this kind of materials materialized rather quickly, um, um, I gave them at least the, uh, the green light to proceed. I, I hope you uh, are okay with that. Um, they will be there just for about two and a half, three hours on the 16th uh, in the morning. And they're going to, they're not going to displace any um, um, fishermen, they're uh, um, people fishing, they're going to um, work with them and, and you know, there'll be uh, a few trucks there and, and maybe a dozen staff going in and out of the water and again simulating rescue of people who uh, have had trouble swimming or have, are on the bottom, etc. And also, uh, you know, uh, retrieving uh, people as well as, you know, they do everything they do cars and property, as well as people who are in need uh, around water bodies. So, so I think I'll stop there. Dave, could, what was the name of the group you said the just for the minutes? Western Massachusetts Technical Rescue Team, and they're out of Northampton. Um, they're coming through the Amherst Fire Department. I would not be surprised if some Amherst Fire Department staff are there as well. And you said that was May 16th? Yes. Okay. That's why it kind of materials materialized quickly. Um, and uh, we want to try to cooperate because they're the folks, they and Amherst uh, Fire and Amherst Police are the folks we call. And when 911 calls go out about buffers or any of our conservation land, we want these people to be very familiar with water bodies as well as the trail system in Amherst and the Mount Holyoke Range. Seems all right with me. Do we, should we do you want a motion or do you want to? I, I don't feel the need for a formal motion unless other commission members do. It's your yeah, I'm comfortable. I've worked with those folks in, uh, at the uh, range before and they're, they're good and they're people that uh, we need to have trained. Yeah. In fact, I've talked to them about maybe practicing in future years down at um, Plumbrook Pond near the Kestrel Trust office, just to get a familiarity with that water body as well. And they could do Owens Pond sometime um, because you know all of these places are used dawn to dusk, 365 days a year. And you know even in the winter for ice rescue and, and such. So it's good to have them be familiar with all of our, our assets in town. Dave, do they do uh, rescue in the, in the river? They do. Yes, they're the main group that does rescue in the Connecticut River as well. And Fort River? And, I'm sorry, Fort River? If somebody had a problem in, 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 the, in the river in town, they would, they would be the people again. A kayaker, for example, tips over and gets pinned on a log. I think the first response in the Fort River would be Amherst Fire. They have members who are trained in the same kind of techniques as this group. Uh, the difference I think is these folks actually go in the water with scuba gear. Um, and you know, sometimes it is, if a rescue has now moved to a recovery, it is this group that does the recovery. Okay, thank you. So it's a combination of both. But if it was a, a Fort River situation, I think Amherst Fire could be there within minutes. This team actually has to assemble and then get somewhere as quickly as they can. Mm -hmm. They do climbing type stuff and uh um you know uh high high angle 
uh, rescues and all that. Um, I think I'll stop there. Aaron may have some updates for you. Um, Aaron may want to give a Hickory Ridge update um, as well. Um, yeah, so I've been, uh, there's multiple things going on at Hickory. I'm, I've been working with a consultant who's doing the design work for the two grants, uh, the park grant and the CDBG grant. Um, so they're doing design work right now for trail system out there. Um, so that's, that's ongoing and hopefully going to be, um, nearing the designs will be nearing completion pretty soon. Um, and then as far as the Hickory Ridge solar project, um, they are in the process right now of putting up security fencing um, around the location um, of the Eastern Array and the Western Array. Um, they're kind of in a holding pattern right now for their building permit. And the reason for that is because there was some discrepancies between the original approved um, plan set as part of the order of conditions and their final, like, I guess they call it an IFC set. Um, so there was some discrepancies for particularly what was missing was the um, flood mitigation that was required as part of the original order of conditions and that flood mitigation was left off the final plan set. So they're in the process of adding that back in. And then uh, the containment for the battery storage facility um, is also being added in. So um, they're in the final stages of um, finalizing their plans and getting us the, fin the final plan set. And once those are submitted to us, then um, basically we'll be moving towards a building permit um, for that project so that they can really get underway with, a, with the work on site. Michelle, you want to say something? Um, yeah, I, I know this was a while ago and you said they're currently putting up the security fence. I was just wondering if it's wildlife friendly fence, like at least six foot, you know, there's lots of critters moving through that river land. Yeah, no, it's a good question, Michelle. Um, so I may defer to Dave or members who were on the board when that fencing was approved. I think that they're this is my understanding, and this is based on the, because there's um, endangered species on the site, that their aim was to keep, or natural heritage's, natural heritage and endangered species program, I believe their intention was to keep the endangered species out of those areas. And so I don't think that it is. And the reason for that is because they don't want endangered species wandering into the um, solar arrays and getting trapped in there. So. Um, but if anybody else knows differently, please let me know. But that that was my understanding. Makes sense. Oh, Laura? Yeah, no, I was just going to comment that um, that actually is frequently true. So the wildlife fencing is really important, especially with like really large solar farms. Um, but in fact, um, often, you know, depending upon what's there, sometimes you want to you know, leave room for like snakes, for example, to go in and out, but you actually don't want to have enough room for like a raccoon to come in and chew up all the wires or, you know, porcupines or things like that. So it just, it's really site specific. Um, so. Yeah, isn't there a situation too, you, it's, it's, you get limited on how high the bottom can be off the ground in terms of certain legality issues? I guess you were just- Yeah, you can't have anyone- you can't have a raccoon come in. Yeah, like, yeah or like you can't people. have it be large enough for a person to be able to right. climb under because it's a major liability because it is a power generation facility, so. So I think we talked about that one on the Mitchell farm when we did the solar array on the Mitchell farm. And it said that we can only go six inches maybe, but it also makes sense about specifically Hickory Ridge, not allowing the animals in, especially during construction. <laughs> So just to confirm, Aaron, when you say security fence, this is the permanent fence. This right. is not construction fence. This oh, is right. the permanent fence. Yep. So gotcha. just just to be clear, okay. I was okay. there this morning. Yeah. So this is the permanent perimeter fence that will provide security to the degree a fence does. You know, so people don't enter the site. And yeah, I'm I'm quite sure we didn't. Natural Heritage and, and the commission did not require a, you know, six inch or eight inch raised fence. I think it does go to the ground because there are certain 
critters out there that we don't want to get, particularly some that are state listed that we don't want to get into those arrays and then either get hit by a, a piece of equipment or never make their way out. So. But that is a good point. We do have that sometimes. And I know on other solar arrays in town, we've had that. So we've required a, it actually. I think yeah. on the Hampshire College one, that might have been required um, mm -hmm. to have a, you know, I think I think it was eight inch. I can't remember exactly. But, mm -hmm. but by and large, it's going very well. Again, kudos to Aaron for being on top of things both in the field and, and on the plan sets. And uh, she and I talk a lot. <laughs> And share information and and uh, a dynamic in their team, you know, flowing through AMP, if you will, has been very responsive. And uh, we continue to be impressed with the project manager on site and being very responsive and and transparent. So that's how we want it to be. This is going to be a a longer construction period than we thought originally, and part of that is just delays due to. Getting um, getting equipment, getting um, uh, getting uh, components of the arrays, and then weather. Um, but I think you know their hope is to be wrapped up in the fall uh, date to be determined at this point. So it'll be all summer. They'll be under construction for sure. Um, it's seven nineteen. Our first hearing's at seven thirty. Do we want to try to get anything else? Unless anyone else had any comments I'd like to say. Um, do we have anything that, any other business? Yeah, so I can give you guys a, a couple updates. Um, the first is that um, several town boards and committees um, received a notification from the New England Central Railroad that they would be doing um, that they would begin spraying in June. Um, and so I sent um, the consultant for New England Central Railroad a uh, correspondence just um, outlining the fact that they still don't have a valid determination of, of applicability from the Conservation Commission. And until they do, they shouldn't be doing any spraying in town. So just if people, eyes and ears out there, just making sure that that's not happening. Um, I don't think that their intention is to spray, but it's, it, I'm suspect, I suspect that it was just sort of a standard boilerplate that went out to all of the towns. Um, but just so that folks are aware, I did send a letter to them basically saying, you guys don't have a valid determination and we're in a holding pattern, basically waiting for them to get us the information that we need in order to reschedule their hearing. And also they never did a butter notifications for their application. They didn't really want to do the butter notifications. So um, so anyways, I'll keep you posted if, if anything changes with that. But right now there's there's no movement on the, the application. We're a couple of years on into this one, aren't we? <clears throat> yeah. Um, it's gosh it was i think two or three years ago that the yeah. determination was was denied basically they the commission didn't confirm the um boundaries because the information submitted to us wasn't wasn't entirely accurate um and then um they did resubmit in an attempt to try to comply with the regulations but um then they didn't want to do the abutter notifications. And there was also still issues with the um, delineation itself. It, it appeared that basically there was no field-based delineation that was ever completed. And so um, that was the concern was, you know, they need to do some due diligence in the field to verify resource areas. And I was able to basically point out multiple resources that were missed in their sort of desktop analysis. So Anyways, um, so that that's that. I just popped the letter, I think, in your folder to let you guys know that I sent the letter. The other um, item is the memorandum of understanding with um, the DPW for operation and maintenance of stormwater um, structures in town. And we have it's it's not a very long document, and um, it's it's by no means like a 
a final document. It's more or less just to get a dialogue started on making, because because we don't want to tie DPW's hands in terms of operation and maintenance. We want it to be clear to them. We want the DPW to be doing annual maintenance on structures and um, to be, um, you know, uh, feel comfortable doing so that they're not committing a violation but at the same time there needs to be some parameters set that basically like if it's a an abandoned outfall or something that kind of exceeds the threshold of annual maintenance or regular maintenance that um, they may need to file a permit so I did pop that into your um, correspondence folder we've it's been drafted since February um, and I know we keep kicking it forward because we've had so many quorum issues, but um, I'd really love if we could d maybe dive into that and and take a quick look. And again, I'm not asking for any approval, but maybe we could just take a quick look at it. And, and um, I'd really like to share it with the DPW and just say, this is a starting point for discussions. And, you know, it's, we can mark it up with track changes or adjust it and and make it so that everybody's happy with it. Um, I think that's kind of the intent, just to get something yeah, on a, paper. A, I think that's a great. I, I I like that approach. I read it. It's really straightforward. Just, you know, I, I appreciate it being um, concise and short. Um, but I, you know, obviously, commission other commission members want to hear your opinions on it. But it's pretty straightforward. Um, the part of like you know tying their hands. I just I, I guess having their understanding of what the commission is looking for. But if I really do like the idea of this just being a draft and then working with us and then working with them on, okay, how can we change it so everybody's happy without making one side angry or the other side mm -hmm. happy? Yeah, I mean, uh, what however you guys would like to handle it if you want to go through it um I, I have it up on the screen right now but if you want to go through it if you if anyone has specific comments um I'm very flexible on approach mm -hmm. so aaron how about it's alex um i think i'm not on mute yeah, yep i can hear you yeah. okay um, it's coming up on, what is it, 725. How about if we just say that by next time we meet, everybody will have read it and have provided comments and you can check it off your list. Okay. Would you, would you mind just doing a separate email with all of us, Aaron, for that? Like a separate notification? Like, a, like, a, like an email agenda. reminder kind of thing? Yeah, like, hey, here's the draft. Look at it. Give us some, sure. give some feedback. Yeah. And you know, and, and put in there that you want comments back to you, not necessarily. I, I don't need to see everybody's comments. Okay, sure. You want to attract changes? Um, comments, whatever you, whatever comments, or track changes um, are are fine with me. Um, whatever, Just whatever you want, put it in the reminder. Okay, yeah, sure. That'd be great. Yeah, you've been very nice and patient and put this in front of us for a good long time and we're tardy in getting it done. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not urgent. I just I just want the DPW to feel empowered to do their regular maintenance and I don't want to certainly stand in the way of their maintenance. Um, but, you know, I, I also want to make sure that we're. Yeah because it, it it has been confusing for everybody like when is it okay and when is it not okay and what do we have to communicate and not communicate um and so it just gets us all on the same page i hope um the other just quick update for anybody who's um uh on the call who might be attending from the public you want me to make, yeah go ahead um the um the let me see what's the, what time was it scheduled for um it's the the 46 fairing street project i've been working with tom reedy and um uh, steve riberty the consultant from goddard consulting who's helping um for the 46 fairing street single family home project um 
I had recommended to them that basically I didn't think that the plan that they had put together was, uh, I felt like there was additional mitigation that would be necessary for the commission to even consider the, the project. And so um, I'm meeting with them later this week to talk about that. And then um, they, they did request a continuance to the meeting on um, May 24th. Um, so a butters were re-notified, legal ad was reposted, and of course we'll handle that when we come to it in the agenda proceedings. But just to let anybody who's in attendance know that they're they are working on additional revisions at my request. Um, so it's you know, I I do sort of apologize for this, but at the same time, I feel like it's very important that staff vet the project with the the applicant to make sure that what's coming before the commission. Um, addresses some of the concerns that have been raised, um, at least to the maximum extent for the commission to consider it. Okay, thanks, Aaron. So we're going to continue. Well, obviously, we'll, have, we'll make a motion for it when it comes time to that. But just for everybody else, just repeat that 46 Fearing Street um, permit will be um, continued to May 24th. And there won't be a Everybody should have gotten a butters notice, but you're not going to get another butters notice for the 24th. Correct. So we've all been down this road before. So, yeah. And we did get some last minute comments in from a butters. Um, like in the last hour, I got two comments in. So I'll make sure to um, get those in your meeting packets for the next meeting so you can sort of have a um, for folks who can't attend the meeting so that you have their comments and can kind of see what their concerns are. Um, and sometimes it's tough when those come in last minute. So, all right. Well, appreciate your due diligence on it, Aaron. All right. Well, it is seven thirty, so I say we proceed to the next hearing. Um, get my cheat sheet here. So this is a notice of intent. So. Um, all right, this public hearing is now called to order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of the wetlands as most recently amended in article 3.31, wetlands protection under the town of Amherst general bylaws. This application states at the same time copies, are, oh, never mind. I think I'm good. Hearing is now open. And some quick round rules, everyone. Um, we're going to try to do this in 20 minutes. We always try a uh, five minute presentation by the applicant or the representative. We try to give five minutes for the staff, five minutes for public comment, and then we try to bring it back to the Conservation Commission again. Um, so again, when the presentation of the applicant or representative um, does come to provost, please state your name, who you're representing. And that same goes with anyone with public comment. Um, we want to hear your name and your address. And then you have two minutes for public comment only, please. That's within our jurisdiction. Okay, so do we have anybody from uh, Wendell Wetland Services? If you are, raise your hand, we'll get you in here. Well, I'm gonna pull in Ward Smith. Yep. And I see one, I'm gonna promote one. I think those will probably be our two folks. If anybody else needs to be pulled into the meeting, feel free to raise your hand. Okay, we see Juan here. Great. Excellent. And Ward, you got you there. So whoever wants to speak, you can unmute yourself and give us a little bit of um, presentation of what we're here for. You know, Fletcher, excuse me, uh, as we go forward, if you could live your Lift, lift your mic when you yeah. talk, it would be helpful. Gotcha. Yeah, these things are so good. I, don't, I can't hear my volume of voice, so I'm starting to whisper because I think I'm talking too loud. All right, gotcha. Hey, Ward, you there? You're muted. So it could be that the... I don't know if the applicant is planning on presenting or if Ward is planning on presenting, but feel free to jump in. Um, I don't know. Let me just check. I think I think Juan and Joy are muted. Yep. Yeah. You guys were. Yeah, we were trying to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no I I this is my first 
such application. So I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect, whether a word should be presenting or not. I assumed he was, but uh, I can. Well, we can try to give him a second here. He's clearly on. So that's good. So we're just there's a He's muted, just muted. So um, if you yeah, we can give him another. I'm here. Yeah, I, we got I, him. I, gotcha. I'm here. Excellent. I mean, I mean, I think um, I can present or per perhaps the applicant per can present. Uh, we, Why don't we go for it? Okay. We, I don't have a, a display prepared for, for the yep. for the meeting. Um, Just a, a quick, um, you know, who you are and then why, you know, why, why you're um, filing the permit and so yeah. the, intent, the intent behind it. So Juan Otmar Pizorno on behalf of myself. <laughs> um, at 910 we, Southeast at Street. 910 Southeast Street. We uh, would like to install the on ground, so above ground pool. Um, although I, I'm, I'm told the definition of that depends on whether I'm talking to conservation or building inspector, but it's it's located on top of the ground on helical piles and uh, with stairs uh, leading to it. Um, we have proposed a location that uh, should should minimize um, environmental impact um, from in the sense that that uh, it's the sunny side, it's still warm by itself. There's less need to use energy to to heat the pool or or make it usable. Um, we um, sure I wasn't pretending I wasn't intending to present, <laughs> but so I'm not sure exactly how to go. So it's here. an eight by twenty recycled shipping container right. pool, and then there's um, work. We've been working with the building inspectors to get the permit. Um, so we're building the stairs and a platform at the top to make sure it's up to code for above ground swimming pools. Um, so the location is um, next to the garage on an existing lawn, but it is within that 50 foot buffer zone to the wetland line. So it's at 35 feet um, with the proposed location that we would like to put it in. Um, the other caveat here is that it does um, overlap with the CR, which we know is an issue. So we've looked at a second option um, with orienting it at a, an angle degree. So the back of it would actually be just on that line. Um, as you can see from the drawing here, we have a very difficult exclusion zone. Um, so we would abut it so it's it's not overlapping into the CR. Um, the slight challenge with that option is that it would go over the sewage line. So we'd have to do extra work um, to make sure that putting in those helical piles wouldn't over um, wouldn't disrupt the sewage line. Um, and that second option also gets it about two feet or so closer to that wetland line, but it's still, um, so it'd be about 33, 32 feet with, um, to that wetland line. So still within that 50 to 25, um, but it would be slightly closer. We've spent literally months <laughs> looking at all the alternatives. Um, anywhere else we put it, it's blocking um, view, it's blocking windows, um, it's an above ground pool, so it sticks up. So anywhere else, it just, <clears throat> we've looked at the north side, um, which is could work, um, but as Juan said, it has more shade, so it's going to require more energy to heat it. It's farther from the driveway, um, so we've been looking at how to get a water truck to provide water for it. We reached out to four different water trucks um, suppliers today. One responded and said they have long hoses. We don't know how long, um, and they will not put a water truck on the lawn. They said they will not do that because it's too heavy. Um, so we're still waiting to hear back from other folks about just how long of a hose they would have. That north side location would be about 120 feet roughly to get a hose to the pool. Um, and it's a low low drainage area, so any trucks that would come onto the lawn would create damage on the lawn there. So those are the three locations, trying to figure out the optimal way to make this right. happen to just bring bring some pool into our life and our kids. Um, I think, oh, and we've actually um, in the last year have planted um, over a thousand square feet of, uh, of uh, habitat. So we've planted four fruit trees, which are on the map. We've planted 12 service or 14 service berry plants, um, two river birch and a red maple. The previous owners had actually removed trees and were trying to put them back in. 
Um, we also have a landscaping plan to go around the pool to, again, provide additional habitat and just for aesthetics to make sure that it looks nice and, and seamless with the natural landscape that we have around the house. And then we're open to other suggestions for mitigation. Um, it was spotted that there's some invasive plants in the field, and we're happy to work on getting those removed. We've been working with Whirlwind Landscape and Garden Design on all the landscaping plants and prioritizing native plants and pollinator um, pollinating uh, attractors so that we can, again, kind of keep the habitat going here. Oh, and we get the, the conservation restricted area, the field hayed um, by someone local uh, that, again, was disrupted before we purchased the house two years ago, and we're reenacting that. So last year was the first year that they cleared it. They weren't able to actually bale the hay, but they were able to just bushwhack it all. And by clearing, you mean mowed? Uh, mowed, yeah, 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 mowed. Yeah. And then this year, hopefully, they can they can properly bale that. I think it covered everything. I think you did. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. A lot much. more coherent than I could ever be. Okay. No problem. Um, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Um, okay. So, all right, we're hearing a few things. We got conservation restriction. We've dealt with this property in the past due to this conservation restriction. Um, we've got some buffer issues. We have a pool in the buffer on the CR line. Um, Aaron, do you have do you want to do you have any photos? Yes, I'll pull, I'm pulling those up right now. Thank you. So um, <clears throat> this is um, basically if you're on the uh, opposite side of the house of the driveway and facing west um, and you can see um, in the uh, background here that there is a stake right here and this is um, a survey notation of where the extent of the um, inclusion area is so that's basically the this is the point of the house where everything within um that extent is outside of the conservation restriction everything that's outside of that area is part of the conservation restriction so if i just turn around in the opposite direction and look out toward the east um this is um, looking in that direction. Actually, this is looking sort of south as well, southeast, um, and you can see that there's the other exclusion zone post there. Um, so again, this is the the extent of the conservation restriction on the property. And then, okay, Ooh. this thing clicks really quickly. Hold on, bear with me one second while I go back. Um, <clears throat> So um, this is facing, this is moving to the opposite side of the property. So like the southern side of the property, the southern side of the house. Um, and the exclusion zone, I'm looking at this, I, I think it's this post right here is one of the corners. And then um, the other one is like up in this vicinity on the other side of the lawn. Um, these other stakes that are shown here um, are basically the configuration of the various um, uh, options that they staked out in the field. <clears throat> so I tried to get a, um, a good view of these um, for the photos. And basically there's there were ones that had, so I believe these are the ones with the black um, stake on them. Can you guys see my cursor? Yeah. Okay. These are stakes for the pool? Yes, for the pool okay. location. So there was two proposed pool locations. The first option was their preferred option, and that's the one that has a section of the pool um, hanging over the CR area, and that's represented by these three um, uh, stakes here that have a string tied around them. So this shows you basically their preferred location where the pool would extend over the CR boundary. Um, and then there's an alternative option that they came up with on this side of the house, which it's the, the black <coughs> stakes. Um, so alternatively to the, the preferred location, um, and I'm going to try to identify the preferred location first, I believe it's here, here, um, do, 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 I want to say here and here. 
here um sort of the the square of the the pool in that location like kind of like that and then the the secondary or second option is i believe um do 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 it's hard to see the ones is on the other side i believe something like this um where the pool would go in this configuration and that would be within the um exclusion zone but that that option too puts it i want to say it's like seven or eight feet closer to the wetland boundary and then turning within, toward so, so that wetland boundary is within the 30 or within 50 within the 50 uh, yeah, yeah so the pool feet. in either instance the the proposed location for where they're putting it on this site is within the 50 foot no no disturb yeah. zone um these are photos of the flagging so the the flagging is it's basically there's a a swale that runs through the center of this field and then there are flags which basically represent um a wet meadow that borders on that swale or intermittent stream on either side so that's that's what the resource area is in this in this case um and then this is looking back in the opposite direction picking up the the extent of the exclusion zone so you can see um the stake looking back um the lawn's part of the exclusion yeah that's the east side of the house right so the the lawn extends beyond the exclusion area um yeah. and from you know talking with the applicant that seems to be, have been a historic, um, when they purchased the property, the lawn had already been extended beyond the exclusion area. Um, so yeah, Dave, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, I got some more information, Dave. Um, yeah, is that okay, Fletcher, if I jump in here? Yeah, before you get yep. too okay. far into the weeds. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I guess um, I wanted to start by saying, um, you know, one, I, I really appreciate um, Juan and Joy and, and you know, them, the, the way they've articulated kind of taking over the property. Um, this is a property that has been before the commission before, and I really acknowledge <coughs> that they are coming to us, coming to you and the staff with a, you know, kind of a complex, um, a complex uh, uh, property here that they have fairly recently purchased. So this CR predates all of us certainly working for the town and all of you as commission members and and they had nothing to do with putting the CR on. Um, it's quite a, it's it's uh, it's not that old, but it's not. Um, and Michelle can probably uh, uh, would agree with me on this. It's not a very complex CR. I mean, today I told I told the owners that this would probably be a 25 page document if it was a CR done today. But it is it is pretty clear the purpose of the uh, it's it's simple yet well written I think and to the point. You know, its purpose is to keep the 10 plus or minus acres in in agriculture to preserve the view shed. Uh, to pr preserve um, a wildlife habitat, uh, uh, the groundwater resources in Lawrence Swamp, et cetera. What makes it a little more complicated, I think, is the orientation, the box that the house is in, the ex so-called exclusion area, and then um, you know the the orientation of of that that exclusion, um, and then you have all the kind of you have the driveway, and you had some historic creep on um, the lawn into the CR area. So setting that all aside for a second, I think they're, in my opinion, they're approaching it, you know, creatively and openly. Um, as someone who kind of has read CRs through the years, I mean, my, my challenge when we went out on a site visit, Aaron and, and myself, when we met with the owners, um, the challenge I see for the commission is the town is the holder. You are the holder of the CR. <clears throat> I don't see that we have any flexibility with with intruding on the CR. Um, I'd love to to hear if there are alternative. You know, if if I'm wrong on that, I just don't see how a pool, a pool, pools, tennis courts, etc., are 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 expressly called out as not being allowed outside the exclusion area. So even though it's three feet, even though it's four feet, even though it's five feet. Um, I don't see as we have any flexibility to intrude or, 
uh, or go beyond uh, the, the exclusion area. So that kind of puts them in a tough situation to change that orientation. And I think they've, you know, they've come up with one option, which does put the pool, again, an above ground pool with very little hardscape or any other, you know, there's, there's steps up and down to this four or five foot high pool. But I think they've done a pretty good job at working with Ward and, and their designers, Whirlwind and others, to, to orient that in such a way so um, that it's minimal impact on, um, you know, the slope to the east. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there that um, they're, they're boxed in here a little bit, both by the CR and by that wet meadow uh, wetland that is part of the agricultural CR. What's interesting is there's no restriction on them essentially farming that wet meadow. I mean, the CR intended them to hay that entire wet meadow. So it's kind of a conundrum here of, of um, purposes in that CR. But anyway, I don't want to open that can of worm necessarily, but I'm just uh, putting it all out there. So I will defer to you all if you have thoughts or questions on, on balancing this, the interest of the CR with the interest of the act and, <coughs> and uh, the, the bylaw and, and your local regs. Thanks, Dave. Um, it is a tricky situation because now we can't let you get, you know, we're, as Dave just said, we're bound by the, the CR. Um, but, we're also bound by the trying to, um, within our own town bylaw, right? Mm -hmm. So the buffers here. Um, so we have some things to try to hash out. Um, Dave, Fletcher, could I ask, you know, Michelle, do you, you know, Michelle is, is, this is the work she does with CRs. Do you agree that, you know, that CR just does not present any flexibility for the, for the commission? Yeah, Dave, absolutely. I, I read the CR. I agree. It's kind of a strange CR that, um, but it is very clear about the restriction itself and it, you know, it's in perpetuity. It's the town's legal responsibility to uphold that. And it runs with a deed. So, you know, that was available upon the purchase of the property. So, yeah, and I'm actually concerned about putting these helical piles you said on the boundary because you mentioned there might have to be something done about the sewage line. So, yeah, I think that staying absolutely within that exclusion is, is critical and we should just take that one off the table about um, going outside of it. Um, there are other things in the CR, um, you know, now that we're on the topic and it does, you know, that we discussed those service berry trees and I was there for that, but you mentioned there's been like 2000 square feet of planting and that didn't come before the commission. So I think that's actually, you know, a violation of the CE because all plantings outside of it are required to have, um, approval by the commission. So, even if you are planting what you think is native habitat, um, it still needs to come before us. So we probably need to actually talk about that because the town has legal responsibility to keep that in compliance. But back to the pool, I just wanted to mention that. And then Aaron, wasn't there a third option to this that was also outside of our 50 foot setback and outside of the exclusion area? Not outside of the 50 foot setback. I'll share the um, the alternatives that were provided to us with the application. Um, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, so this is the preferred option, which puts the corner outside of the CR exclusion zone. Aaron, this is can blow it up. Oh, yeah, of course. Sorry about that. Um, this is, I. My understanding is this is um, alter, uh, option two, excuse me, alter, uh, option two. This is and then, all, option two is outside of the CR. Option so in, two, in the exclusion. Same option two is, is right on the exclusion zone line. On the line. Um, got it. And it puts, so if you look at, let me go back to the first one. So <clears throat> this one keeps it outside <clears throat> of 35 foot. Okay. So their preferred option keeps it 35 feet away from the wetland. Option two which shifts it and keeps it inside the exclusion zone, kicks it closer so it's like approximately 32 feet to the wetland. 
And then this is um, a third option that was put on the proposal. This one wasn't staked out in the field, but um, just this left is, stairs. <laughs> come again. It's just less stairs. It's just looking yeah. at a different different stair configuration to try to make it fit. But. Because the, the, the part of the footprint was mandated by the building inspectors who required a, um, a landing. And so we were creatively trying to find a situation where we could reduce the footprint. But we never stake that out, yeah. so we might as well disregard it. Yeah. But also, so this wouldn't have a deck? Like this is an above ground pool and no decking. Like once you put a yeah, deck on it to hang there's out. There's a on drawing. It. Maybe Aaron could bring up the drawing. There's a there's a there's a okay. picture of it. Actually, can I? Um, okay, so you just gave us three options in the same place in the buffer every time. You all mentioned you will not, you cannot put the pool in a different location within the exclusion because it's too far away from the driveway. So how come how come how come we're dealing? Why not just put the pool outside the buffer? That's what I was thinking too. So we we did not include that in the um, in in the original filing, but with, it's been in discussion. Uh, it's been in discussion to and we've been asked by by Aaron by uh, David and <clears throat> why not put it in in other locations, right? Yeah. So this is a this is a drawing of, of what we uh, hope to to build. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. you know, the pools about it's just like a, a, a um, they call it a wedding cake uh, staircase. Uh, I see. Now and, I see what you're doing. Um, yeah, so that's essentially the okay. Um, so, every every yeah. location has some advantages and disadvantages. The the problem of of the north area, besides the it being a cooler area which affects us as, as users, of course, but also affects the environmental impact of the pool, which we would love to keep low. We just had solar panels installed. We also put in uh, heat pumps to have a more sustainable way of heating the house. And we, we didn't even, like we had suggestions on, on to do a, like a ground, uh, um, ground-based um, heat pump, geothermal pool. Yeah. Uh, sorry, geothermal uh, heat pumps, but we yeah. said no, no, we don't want to touch the the field. It's it's you know goes against what we believe in, uh, which you know we we want to maintain the field the way it is. Uh, so we didn't even come to the commission for that. So you're just saying so the pool so the pool to the uh, locate so uh, this is for, really easy for me to see because I'm just yeah. looking at the white paper. Putting the pool to the north side. I mean, so I, this is we're here because you're in the, our jurisdiction. Um, obviously there's a CR, which is tough too, but we're, our concern is impacting the resource. So we have here a wetland buffer You're within our, we have a, a bylaw that says a 50 foot no touch. So how can we find a middle ground here? And so that's why I was saying what's wrong with mm -hmm. the north side. And you're saying that it would take more, it would keep the pool cooler. It, it will take more energy to keep it at a usable temperature. So uh, it, be a heated pool. It, it has a heating element that wouldn't be used as much if it was on the sunny side, which is the south side. Mm -hmm. um, the drainage on that side part of the, the land is very poor. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's general, out. it's a general in, in this whole area. Yeah. Um, the then, driveway is further away. So it, I guess it's not a fully developed uh, answer yet whether or not that would really impact us but um, what's clear is that no nobody who brings water or takes the water out um, will drive on on grass and so we we don't want to want to to need to extend the driveway it's unclear whether or not we would really need to but it would require long poses at the very least and there's windows so everything on that side where you just someone had just drawn those are it's all windows mm -hmm. that open from the house so we can't put it smack dab right in front of it because it's all windows all right so you know those are you can't put the, those are basement windows i think on the, because the pools the in front the, it's a hat it's a it's um it's an office space and a living space it's a family room so it's it's not base well it's half basement i don't know what the proper term is um but it's it's living space that's used every day <laughs> okay Okay, thank you. All right. Um, 
sounds all right. We heard that. Uh, Michelle, do you have a comment? Oh, just quickly, like I appreciate the energy efficient consideration, but that's, you know, we're here to consider the wetland buffer mm -hmm. and the CR. So while it's, you know, a good consideration, it, it's not, I don't think it should be factored into what we're putting on the table right here. Okay. Thanks, Michelle. Laura? I was, I was gonna say the same thing too. I think, you know, in a perfect world, um, you know, we would put it where you're suggesting to maximize sunlight and minimize any sort of external heating. Um, but I actually think there's actually just firm limitations in terms of what we can can approve here. So it's gonna be a cooler, it's gonna be a colder pool, but um, you know, I think we gotta look at alternative uh, plans. Any other um, commission? Yeah, Alex. So oh, if we could think a little bit about our own regulations and the 35 and the 50 foot buffer, um, I think both designs are um, across the 50 foot line and one third of the house is within the 100 foot buffer. So the 100 foot buffer has already been impacted by the house and putting the pool inside the 100 foot buffer just compounds that. Uh, and not only that, but it, it goes across the 50 foot buffer. And I believe our town regulations speak to that. <clears throat> when, when we were there today, uh, we did look at, at uh, I can't, you can't see me pointing, but we did look for, at the area that they're discussing now on the, what would that be? North. The <laughs> northeast corner. Yeah, right. Oh, one second, Alex. Is. Hey, Ward, could you uh, uh, mute yourself, please? I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, no apologies. No, thank you. Go ahead, Alex. And I understand. I, I understand their issues. Um, I don't think that the the site where the where the circle is has. Um, I mean, they made four calls to people that haul water today. It doesn't seem like that area is is fleshed out yet. So perhaps they could do some more homework on on that north site or the where the circle is and get it out of the 100 foot buffer, get it out of the 50 foot buffer. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Alex. Um, Andre? I do have some uh, uh, some comments, but I'm wondering if the public, if there's anyone from the public who has any commentary. Okay, well, I was gonna just keep it open for us and then I was gonna go to public, but if, you okay. if anyone else from the commission has anything to say, I'll bring it up to the public. I had a couple of other points. Go for it. Okay. Um, the the where the conservation easement boundaries are were staked, but the mowing of the lawn confuses where the conservation easement is. This is not a discussion about the wetlands. It's a discussion about the conservation easement. And it might be handy if if the corners of the conservation easement were permanently marked. And the the conservation easement uh, does not allow it allows mowing for agricultural purposes, but not for a lawn. And you might consider um, stopping mowing uh, in the conservation easement because it's not agricultural. Right, and they said this was something they that had already previously been happening um, before they doesn't they, when they bought it. Well, why continue that? Why continue it? All right, point taken. Um, can I respond to that briefly? Uh, uh, yes. Get, um, yes. Please, yeah. Just so very briefly, please. Yes. So we we I mean this was the state that the lawn was when we purchased it, but we we are concerned about um, ticks being that much closer to where our kids are playing if we get the, the lawn, the unmowed lawn, the field closer to the house. So we have two young kids that are out there quite often. And I, I don't know that I want to risk. We're not doing anything else in that mowed area. It is what we bought the house as. We haven't done anything else to it. So my concern would be about bringing the ticks yes. closer. Got it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Michelle, and then we'll probably go to the- um, Yeah, so just Alex reminded me that um, yeah, because it was mowed by the previous landowners does not mean that it should still be mowed. As far as ticks, I have little kids in a woods and a lawn. And what could happen is that those boundaries are more permanently marked, like they should have been prior. And um, like, 
to a two foot gravel barrier between you and the lawn would be enough to desiccate ticks. And there's, you know, data about how to make tick barriers. Um, Aaron, I'm wondering if there is a baseline for this property. Uh, I know it was like 2012 or something, but that would be pretty informative. And that's all. Can I just make a comment real quick, Fletcher? Yep, make it quick, you got Don't it. Don't we wanna stay on topic? Um, well, that, I'm a little, well, it's unfortunate because we have jurisdiction with wetlands, but this okay. is, we hold the CR. Mm -hmm. So that, do you remember when we had the last yeah. owners came in? It yeah. wasn't even juris. It was barely juris. Well, they were in the hundred foot buffer. Yeah. But, so where it, I, I'm having, I am having a hard time with that. Um. Mm -hmm. So thank you for bringing that up. Um. Because, I'm focused on the jurisdiction, but this mm -hmm. is the CR that we hold. Mm -hmm. Dave, you have um, a very quick thirty seconds, and we'll um, bring it to the. Yeah. Public. No, I did. I I I hear you all on the CR, but I don't want to lose sight of the fact that we have two relatively new landowners in this location who are here. They're well aware of the CR. They're working with us on the CR. Um, and, and I hear from them both in the visit I did last week and then tonight that they're willing to work with us. Part of this discussion I see as, as education for them and for us about this complex property. So I, I think we can we can work, I know we can work with, with both of them on the CR issues moving forward. I think that what I've heard from the commission is you've made it clear that the, the pool cannot be outside of the exclusion parcel, which I think is the right direction. But you know, um, I, I just I know they're related, but but I, I guess I would encourage you to to really give more direction about the pool relative to the wetlands. If we if we've established if you've established that the pool no part of the pool can go outside the exclusion area, then I would encourage you to focus on the wetland piece. And and if Juan or Joy or um, Ward has any more input on creative solutions on where that that pool could go, so that's that's my my advice. We haven't heard much at all from Ward, and I understand he's raised raised his hand. Thanks. Uh, okay, let's um. Let me get a couple. We have a few people from the public I'd like to take in. Again, folks in the public, your name, address, you got two minutes. Um, and let's keep this um, within the jurisdiction of the wetlands, please, with your comments. So if you have somebody from the public, you can raise your hand and we'll get you in here. I think Ward, we'll get to you. Can you? He has to put his hand down and then we can get in there. No, nobody from the public. I'll just pull Ward in as a panelist for right okay. now. And then if anybody else has comments, um, I, I don't know if he just lost internet connectivity or something. Okay. So if there's anybody from the public, raise your hand. Again, name, address, you got two minutes. Okay, excellent. Um, so let's try to get Ward back in here. Um, and but I, you know, it seems that there's everybody at least on the commission here is um, saying no pool in the buffer because that's um, what I'm gathering. Um, because this current those three addition or um, proposals of the pool location don't seem to be um, driving. Ward, if you'd like to say a few things, please do. Um, but in terms of the jurisdiction of this pool, proposed pool. It looks like we lost Ward. It might be a connectivity. Let's see if he jumps back in. Yeah, he's back. He's here. Is he there? He's just muted. Yeah, he was having an issue with uh, with his mute uh, earlier when yeah. he first joined. Can you hear me? We got you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. So Mark Stinson was uh, questioning whether or not the wetland that I delineated was actually a wetland because it didn't show up on the uh, maps. It is a wetland, but it's a, you know, marginal wetland. Um, and where they want to put the pool is in a mown lawn. So I understand that um, the commission has a setback and I, I fully respect that, but they're in, they would be putting a pool in a mown lawn within the buffer to a um, 
wetland that's a uh, wet meadow that's a mown wet meadow. So I just think the commission should take that under consideration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, commission, here we are. Andre? I'd just like to second the some of the comments um, from before where essentially the, the three options that we're seeing, one of them is uh, within the uh, CR and the other two are still within the um, uh, within the wet, the 50, uh, 50 feet. Um, we did during our visit earlier discuss other options that uh, came out uh, here during our meeting. <coughs> tonight. And as far as I can see, I think those are viable options for, for a pool. Um, are the, you saying to the north? To the northeast, yeah. yes. Um, there's enough space there <clears throat> to, uh, to put the pool uh, without actually putting it right up against the, uh, the windows. If you see the, uh, uh, the map, you can, you can see that there is space there. Uh, and the reasons uh, for not putting it there um that uh, uh that the uh, landowners have given us are uh, that it blocks their view and that the um that it would be difficult for uh, the water to be de delivered but at the time that we were speaking this morning they hadn't checked with any water delivery services about whether that water could be delivered or not um which so I, uh, to me, I think they, they're, there's, uh, I don't know, I, I, I'm not quite seeing things that are the same way that the uh, uh, landowners are seeing it. And I just wanted to uh, put my opinions out there. Thank you, Andre. Laura? I was gonna say, first, I just wanna say, thank you guys for coming in front of the commission um, and being reasonable and talking with us. So I think that's the first thing. I think a lot of people do things in this town without even bringing it in front of the commission. So I wanted to say thanks for that. Um, I tend to agree with um, Andre that, you know, I, I'm certain you'll find a water delivery service with a long hose. And um, while I hear Ward's point that it's, I don't know if there's such thing as a lesser wetland, um, but uh, you know, according to the map, it's a wetland and there is this restriction. Um, and we definitely cannot grant you permission uh, to put a pool in that, um, you know, that restricted area. So I think m my suggestion would be Fletcher to go back to the drawing board with plans for a new location um, so that's, that's my thinking. Thank you, Laura. I think you heard it folks. Um, we would, we would not like to see that buffer area disturbed. Um, there does seem to be alternatives we hope. Um, but it's true. We're here to try to protect those resources and, <clears throat> windows and heating elements for pools is a tough uh, sell for us. Um, doesn't mean we'll like to work with you. Um, and there's other issues with, you know, but I think, I think we heard it from the CONCOM here. Okay. Is there anything else you need from us? That's a good question. So, I mean, I think that, um, I guess the, the next step would be to determine, you know, if you're going to come back with a revision um, that sort of takes everybody's um, comments into consideration. And if that's the case, we would continue to the next meeting so that the commission could review, you know, potential additional alternatives and see if there was one that we could come to a, maybe a um, uh, some sort of a you know, cooperative agreement on a, a different location that was a little further away from the wetland. And um, yeah, so I, my suggestion would be to continue to allow the applicant a little time to take the comments into consideration and, um, you know, up you. come up with possible alternative. Yeah, we've spent a lot of 
a lot of energy on this. So I don't, I don't think we'll keep pushing it. Um, I think we'll look for in the exclusion zone at whatever angle we can get it. So it's an exclusion and outside of that hundred buffer, because this has been honestly really draining um, and not a clear process. And um, I know there's other conversation about the CR later, but we're trying our darndest and the, the town GIS, which we we're using to, earlier to reference for plannings mm -hmm. was off. And I know that's a non-issue, but we didn't know that the town GIS was off and we're trying our hardest. And I actually work with conservation orgs. So it's hard to hear that you guys are criticizing the things that we've done in the CR. So um, we've only been here a year and a half and this is just unsettling. So I just feel like I need to state that. Um, and I appreciate the support that some of you have given, um, but it's been very difficult. And we are probably one of the more pro conservation families that you'll encounter. So I know there's a lot here, but we're doing our damnedest. So anyway, I can let you go on to the next topic, but I was just surprised by some of the other comments that came up tonight outside of the pool. So um, I guess the question is, do you want to withdraw the application right. or do you want the commission to render a decision based on the plan that is currently before them? Um, what would your preference be? I mean, if, if we put it in exclusion zone and outside of that 100 buffer, we don't need to proceed with you, correct? If it's within the exclusion zone and outside of the 100 foot buffer, right. um, then... Right it wouldn't require uh, the CONCOM approval right. at that point. Right, right. So just, I guess that means withdraw it. We've, we've been, we've, we've spent been months on this. this. Yeah, we've been trying this since January. And we've and, got a lot. And also on. working with the building inspectors. And oh, oh. so this is a whole different story, but so we're, we're, so we're going to pick the easiest path that we can find to. Yeah. to, to so you'd like us to make a determination and not withdraw? What's the difference? So with a withdrawal, it would basically mean that you're just withdrawing the application without prejudice and um, kind of moving forward on a different path with a decision um, or basically asking us to close the public hearing tonight. What that would mean is that we can't then take other considerations into, for example, like let's say in a week you come up with an option where you keep it outside of 50 feet. We wouldn't be able to consider it at that point. So if you if you'd like to continue it to the 24th just to give it some additional thought and see if you could come up with something outside of say 50 feet um, outside of the no disturb zone just to give it a little more thought it's an option that keeps it on the table for us to be able to still consider those um and so it, really it's up to you if you'd like yeah. to keep it open so we can talk more or if you'd if you'd prefer to withdraw it um it's I think, I think the only option to do that outside of the 50 feet and inside the exclusion zone would involve it removing a tree that we're not willing to remove because no. you would be against conservation. Oh. So I'm sorry if my frustration is showing. That's fine. Uh, we're just trying to help. I mean, we're trying to give you well, a little I bit of wiggle room. Unless Ward recommends differently, um, I, think withdraw. I think we'll withdraw without withdraw. prejudice. And, and I think on. that's a. Hmm. Okay, so we'll withdraw the application. Um, in terms of proceeding, we have to close the hearing. Yeah, we we would formally close the public yeah. hearing, and um, if it's withdrawn, then we would just the the permit application would just be withdrawn from there, so there'd be no further action needed. That would be the motion. Um, question: If the um, uh, Aaron talked about outside the 50 foot buffer, but if they have a proposal that's inside the 100 foot buffer, it still has to come before the commission, correct? So um, we won't put anything in that zone. I, because that's right smack dab in the middle of the view. It's, yeah, we, I promise you, we won't put it in that 100 to 50 foot zone. So we'll only look outside of 100. If Aaron wants to put the map back up, we can just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that's why we are offering, if you want to withdraw, you withdraw, we can continue. You can still think about, you know, it gives you a little bit more time. The permit's not, it's just there. So we're just trying to, do you want more time to think about it? 
or do you want to just withdraw or the other option was that we make a determination therefore you can't but i don't know that we have time to think the, of other options the discussed okay. area in the north okay. side of the house is is the only other is, option. is the only other option that we can think of okay. it's outside of the 100 buffer line so i think uh, i think that's okay. what we'll so let's well, we'll stick with the withdrawal then alex do you have your questions your your um fulfilled there great okay yeah I, uh, it's still uh, with regard to the CR. I think it might be useful for them to consider uh, putting markers in the ground where those boundaries are, so that they or. We, they can, uh, sorry to interrupt. We have paid for them to be permanently yeah. marked. Yes. When it was just, surveyed. Yeah, when we surveyed, Excellent. we had pins put in. Yeah, I didn't hear that today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, I think we're we're going to withdraw the application for this one. Um, so we'll take make a motion. Yeah. So it'd just be a motion to to close the public hearing, okay. um, and we can just note that the application was withdrawn without prejudice. Okay. Thank you. Do they need to come in for uh, to deal with the trees? We're, we're, let's stick with. Let's. Yeah. If if I could, maybe I will talk to Joy and Juan separately on that track, having anything to do with any of your concerns about trees or what happens on the CR, and I can report back to you, you know, in a month or something like that. Yeah, I just want to make a comment for the record. Um, I don't want community members to come to this committee for one particular issue and then get attacked, which it feels like sometimes for with a lot of other um, issues. Uh, and I think what we what I what I have historically liked is community members feeling um, like comfortable presenting their ideas and having discussions, constructive discussions, and not feeling like they're going to be criticized for um, for other things that they're doing on their property. So. And I say that because it's like cautionary. I think that the more the more we appear that way, which based on the feedback I'm hearing tonight, um, the less likely it is people are going to come to us. And we want people to come to us um, with what they're doing on their land. So that's my. I just want to get that comment on the record. Thank you, Laura. Are you ready for a motion? I motion to uh, close a hearing on 910 Southeast Street um, swimming pool. I second that. Okay, Andre the first, um, Laura the second. Voice vote, Michelle? Aye. Laura? Aye. Alex? Aye. Andre? Aye. Cameron? Aye. And I for Fletcher. Okay, Juan, Joy. Take care. Have Thank a good you. evening. Hey, Dave, can I just ask a real quick question? Because it's really relevant to what this was about. Um, one thing our organization does is when a deed changes hands, if there's a conservation restriction on that deed, someone reaches out to a landowner so they know up front what the restrictions are and there's no surprises where they might be coming to us out of compliance. Um, but you know, we we are legally obligated mm -hmm. to maintain the conservation easement as it was written, even though we may not 20 years down the road think that that's the best use of the land, but it just may be a good practice to avoid sort of unsettled things like this in the future. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And, and I kind of alluded to that earlier in my comments about, you know, some of the other work we're doing is we need to do a better job on annual annual visits to CR'd properties and communication with landowners who own CR'd properties, just like we get a visit from DCR because they hold a CR on some of our land and likewise Kestrel does too. So um, yeah, I, we I still agree. get the same thing with order conditions when, yeah. or when landowners swap. And it's, mm. it's, it's a great idea, Michelle. I mean, it's just, I think would avoid so much hard, hot, you know, hard feelings, so. Yeah, and this one's yes. tricky. This that is, I know. It is. Um, I, I do want to yeah, just. I, I will, yeah. And and I will, Aaron and I will follow up with them and talk about the CR. I, I don't think anything mentioned tonight is 
tremendously detrimental. Nothing has been built on the CR. There's, there's a few plantings of small trees and maybe some mowing issues, but everything is now marked in the field, which is good, the exclusion. Um, but yeah, I, and, and again, everything is in, you know, everything is in someone's deed and the plans are right there, but um, sometimes, you know, there may not be an awareness of everything you're purchasing. So yep. I agree, Michelle, and we'll, we'll work on that. All right, well, thanks for, um, and then appreciate you guys following up with them. Um, and also, I just want to, um, before we move on, um, I want to mention to anybody in the public, we are continuing the 46 Fearing Street um, hearing. We had asked for additional um, supporting materials that we're going to continue that meeting to May 24th. So again, 46 Fearing Street is um, continued again, but to May 24th. Alex, you have something? Yeah, I just want to talk about the benefit of a site visit. Today, there were two members of the commission that showed up for the site visit. You see a lot of things when you're on the site visit mm -hmm. that you can't get from the drawings during the commission meeting. At the same time, the commission members can't talk to each other unless we're um, um, in, the, in the sunshine. The only time to bring up issues that are seen during the site visit is during this meeting. Sometimes that's hard. So um, I encourage people to go on site visits so that they can see what others see and, um, and um, I appreciate uh, uh, the difficulty that the previous people are in. Um, they've got money on the line um, and they came to the commission having already paid for the pool. So um, it's hard, but now's the time also to bring up other issues. So Dave's aware of it. And um, so site visits pay off. Thank you. Got it, thanks Alex. All right, we're gonna move on to the next hearing, 735. Um, I'm ready. Well, no, I'm not. <clears throat> now I'm ready. Uh, this hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, check Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act relative to the protection of the wetlands as most recently amended, Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. So, Ward, we got you here. Um, if you could just give us a quick five minute, you know, who you are, what you're representing, what, and why you're coming in front of us. Um, you can unmute yourself and you are ready. All, it's all yours. Hello, can you hear yes, me? Gotcha, gotcha. Um, um, Liam is uh, here from, uh, he may be able to give a better synopsis than I can, but this is a uh, limited project provision that we're uh, filing under uh, for a uh, boardwalk. Um, it, it's uh, the New England and, uh, New England and uh, Robert Frost trails. And it's a uh, trying to, uh, make the trails more um make them more narrow and and uh with boardwalks and um uh, bog bridges and uh liam are you here yeah liam's right there you want to let liam um jump it's just yeah, liam can i think just he, quick can quick he, he can probably explain it better than i can that's fine liam can you introduce liam? yourself and give us a quick synopsis of um what you guys are proposing. Yeah, sure thing. Um, there's actually a map a few pages down on the PDF that might be a useful visual as I explain. Um, but essentially- um, Just for the record, state who you are and- uh, Oh yeah, with. sorry. Uh, my name is Liam Cregan. I'm with the Appalachian Mountain Club. Um, and the short story is we collaborated with Kestrel Land Trust to apply for a grant to improve trail conditions. <clears throat> on both the Robert Frost Trail and the New England Trail in the Mount Holyoke Range State Park. So all these projects are to take place on or near Mount Norwatic. 
in Amherst. Um, I think if you scroll down another page or two, there's an overview map of all the projects we're proposing, some of which are in the wetlands, some of which are not. Um, but essentially, um, on the New England Trail, we're proposing a regrading and resurfacing of the trail, starting um, adjacent to a wetland that were delineated. Um, and then it ascends up Mount Norwatic up to the South Side Trail, which is about a thousand feet up from the starting point. So the work area is kind of where that uh, yellow orange square is on the right side of the map. And the resurfacing will begin down um, on the New England Trail, which is the white and black dashed line. That's also the same route as the Robert Frost Trail. Um, and then right where you can see the orange and black dashed line deviate north of uh, the New England Trail, we're proposing a few water crossings on the existing trail. Essentially, these are wet areas that have they're retaining water. Um, there's water seeping down either from streams or seeps, and we're proposing installation of what we call bog bridges. Uh, they're essentially small boardwalks with footings in the ground, and then there's a span, uh, 20 inch, two, two, two by 10 side by side. Um, and so the finer detailed map kind of shows those locations, uh, but the general idea is to concentrate use on this really popular hiking area and um, hopefully restore the surrounding wet areas to a natural condition. So this first site is where the, the um, resurfacing begins and the green line is a delineated wetland. Um, the white dashed line is the trail. It'll start um, kind of right where the um, text is. There's an arrow pointing down to the start point. And then it'll be three foot wide gravel crush, which we're gonna lay down. There's gonna be a professional trail crew who we hope to be out there with a mini excavator to expedite the work. And then they'll lay down that gravel crush um, and then continue up the mountain. So maybe we can go to the next. This is Ward, the, the first uh, uh, slide is buffer zone only work. Mm. Okay. And then this is the bog bridging areas and this work will take place in, in wetlands. So the first proposed brought bog bridge area will be 20 feet long. The footings will be two feet wide. Um, it will be elevated one foot off the ground. Um, and so they'll be altering three square feet of uh, wetlands and then restoring 421 square feet. Um, the second so one- this, sorry, is Ward, this is Ward again, all of these will be basically narrowing the trail. So we've got a braided trail through the wetlands. And so they're gonna put bog bridges in and restore more <laughs> wetland that's gonna be altered by the uh, footings of the bog bridges. Yeah, and more, maybe you could continue here with the presentation. Yeah, so these are, these are basically three wetland crossings. They're both, they're all three bordering vegetated wetlands. And the you know it's it's a it's a trail that um, mountain bikers and hikers have, have made you know really wide. So the, the idea is to make a bog bridge and restore the braided trail back to natural conditions. So it's going to be a uh, two feet wide, Liam, thick trail through the through the wetlands. And the and and the braided trail on the on the sides will be restored to natural conditions. Yeah, the actual bridge surface will be about twenty inches wide. Okay, all right. Thank you very much, you two. And then the, and then there's an there's another crossing that's going to be a uh, a bridge crossing of an intermittent stream. This one, this one yeah. right here, right? Yeah. And this follows the same concept that the town um, used as far as um, the sort of standard design concept that we used at um, Sweet Alice Conservation Area. So just to yep. put that out there, and I'll pull up site visit photos while we're while we're talking. So 
Sorry, I'm toggling back and forth on a. Sorry if I missed this. Who's the landowner? PCR. Yep. And then the John S. Lane is also a landowner. And they've both given permission for the grant. We have to acquire permission. DCR just signed off on their final review. Today. <clears throat> of this review that you're you're presenting right now dcr yeah. signed off on mm -hmm. okay so where everybody's standing in the photo is sort of where the trail work would begin so you can see there's an existing gravel path there um and this is showing the sort of earthen compacted earthen path that they're hoping to sort of narrow with a gravel and then naturalize the sides a little bit because it's it's widened out quite a bit yeah this, this is, is the this is the first crossing. This is just buffer zone only work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those are just photos of the wetland on either side. So you can sort of see there's uh, a there's a an upland on one side or a um a wetland on one side and then there's it it goes underneath the the trail and comes out to a intermittent stream on the other side of the trail. Which is kind of hard to see in the photos because it's it's actually like a clogged culvert um, that goes under the under the trail. So that'll be a bog bridge. Um, that no, one's. This, this will be this will be gravel just on the existing path. Mm -hmm. So there's no no wetland impacts at this location. Yeah, it's just buffer zone only st trail stabilization. If it helps. Uh locate the where this is if you're on the m m trail or the new england trail it's just after the power lines if you're coming from the uh visitor center it's a beautiful hike back there if, for folks who haven't been um and this is one of the bog bridge crossing locations as you can see it's been really chewed up by um foot traffic it's it's i guess more difficult to see and maybe i can try to zoom in a little bit um no, it's beat up in there. Yeah. yeah, it's really, really beat up. Um, this is another one of the bog bridge locations. Again, very wide and very chewed up by foot traffic. That's another view of it. Um, this is a the third one. So, I mean, I see all of these as mitigation projects. And then this is the um, the bridge location. So right now it's dammed up with a bunch of um, uh, logs that people have just placed in front of the stream and so it would put a, a formal footbridge crossing across there okay thank you uh, alex you have something you want to say yeah aaron could you go back to slide one yes bear with me while i get there <clears throat> uh, you meant photo one alex yeah, or photo one yeah i think we got yeah three people working on that um, this is where they want to narrow the trail, and um, I think the work that's going to go on is going to be great. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with it, but I wanted to make a cultural comment that I found out about today, and that is that not all cultures like to live, walk in single file, and I was told today that the Latin community actually likes to walk exactly like these three people are, essentially three abreast, almost elbow to elbow as they chat. And um, widening the trail for a length of the trail, for a long part of the trail, would be counter to those cultural preferences um, and, and in line with perhaps another culture where they wants to walk in single file. So even these stretches that they're talking about are not long. I just wanted to make the comment that uh, a wide, the trail is wide because people use it that way. And um, I was not aware of the cultural differences between how people walk in the woods um, in an environment like this. This isn't the White Mountains. This is something close to you know a lot of people. And I thought uh, now's a good time to sort of put that thought out there. Beyond that, the stabilization work that's going on in some areas, as much as six or seven or eight inches of soil has been eroded and huge roots and this is just a marvelous project so thank you very much all right um any other commission members anything to comment on aaron you want to say something um i was just going to say that the natural heritage and endangered species comments haven't come in yet and i did reach out to um 
uh, Melanie she's been I'm always afraid I'm gonna mess up her last name um, and Melanie said that they haven't heard back from the wildlife biologist yet um, with <laughs> comments on the application which they have until 521 I know that there's a tight timeline for this because of the grant application um, I I don't know how the Commission you know it's <laughs> in the past the commission will you know commissions won't approve um without an HESP comments and I know that's a recommendation of DEP um but I don't know I just wanted to put that out there because it kind of puts us in a tough spot because I know that they're really needing to move with construction to stay in compliance with the grant what what you type of time frame are they talking about for construction compliance the machine work we're hoping to start um, uh, at the latest, May 29th. Um, the rest of the work, the bog bridging, is scheduled for late July. Okay, and, so uh, there, there's an opportunity to start higher up on the mountain, but I think in speaking with the folks implementing the work, it would be less than ideal yeah. to do that rather than work their way up. And Aaron, you just said that Natural Heritage has the 21st. Okay. Is that um, what you just said? Yeah, they have yeah. till till uh, May 21st to issue comments to us, and our um, next meeting's on May 24th. If what Alex about Andre, a conditional? What about, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, I was going to first um, to have you guys drop your hands unless you want to say something, because Ward do, has, yeah. okay, you do, want, you do want to keep it up. All right, go, yeah. and then we'll give it to Ward. Okay, uh, yeah, I, uh, first, just to, uh, relative to the discussion we're having right now, what about um, approving it conditionally? conditional on um on uh on a thumbs up from natural Her heritage yep. um, we'll get let's get there in a second mm -hmm. i'm okay. happy to get so, to i just want to see if there's any more um, okay like my you know, second comment. comment yes go ahead <laughs> my second comment is um what i had mentioned during the mm -hmm. uh, site visit earlier <clears throat> this morning uh is if while you're doing that uh, while you're putting up the bridges and so on if you can keep in mind uh, that second wheel, that outer wheel of the uh, ATVs that need to get through there for uh, uh, for the uh, EMTs and the Rangers and so on. That's all I have. Okay, thank you, uh, Ward. Do you have something you want to add? Uh, I, I was just going to re reiterate what he said. I, I, I'm uh, asking you to approve it. Uh, contingent on uh, natural heritage mm -hmm. comments. Okay, sounds good. Uh, anybody else from the commission have anything you want to say before I open up to the public? Okay, if anybody in the public has any um, questions or comments, please raise your hand and we'll get you on here. State your name, address, and you got two minutes. Do you want me to pull people in Fletcher or would you yes. prefer to? I okay. would prefer you to, please. Okay. So I'm going to pull in uh, somebody who's listed as Freddie Manning to public comment. Excellent. So Freddie, when you get on, unmute and just state your name and your address. Sometimes this takes a few minutes for people to come into the room. Sorry. I don't know why there seems to be a delay. I'm just going to try the allow to talk and see if that works because for some reason the it doesn't seem to be working to pull them into the room so or pull them into the room excuse me there we go oh okay all right Freddie yeah there you go um yeah um it's, it's interesting I had I just stayed uh, with this conversation because I'm interested I didn't know it was going to go on tonight but one of the things that I'm I'm an 87 year old hiker and one of the things that bothers me is the width of the when we have boards is the width of the two together sometimes you know when it's going over something like rushing water or a really wet thing on the side it just doesn't feel like quite enough space to put one foot in front of the other comfortably and I just hope you make those wide enough so that you really, you know, if, if someone is hiking with a pole, there's room to put the pole down and move their feet past it. Um, so I just thought that would, I would add that because I know there's a couple of places that I know in the surrounding area where we like, 
you know, kind of have to kind of follow each other behind and put a hand on a back and that sort of thing. Okay. Thanks, Freddie. Yep. Anyone else from the public? Two hands here. Oh. No. Okay, sounds good. Um, it sounds like so far everyone in the commission is in favor of this. Uh, Aaron, could you help guide us here? We don't have natural heritage, obviously. We and we usually always continue a hearing until we get natural heritage comments. So yeah, how can we? How can we? Yeah. Streamline. Yeah, I mean it, it. It's not really recommended by DEP to do it, but um, you know, it's it's up to you. And I understand the applicant has a tight timeline. So um, as long as um, we stipulate in the conditions that any and all um, approvals um, of NHESP um, are, I mean, the approval of the the order of conditions is contingent on the approval of natural heritage, and that any conditions that are imposed on the project by natural heritage must be followed. Um, I, I guess, you know, I think that the commission would be safe saying that. Um, I did draft the order of conditions. I drafted um, in your folders for this project, there's an attachment one and an attachment two. Um, those were taken, those boilerplates were taken from the Robert Frost Trail project that was done two years ago. Um, I did also suggest two additional conditions. Um, one is that the proposed, so there, there is a, um, in one of the areas where bog bridging was proposed, um, there was, there's like a small groundwater seep that flows along the side of the trail and there was a discussion about um, basically sort of formalizing that swale so that water could flow a little more freely. Right now it's been completely damaged by foot traffic. And so the condition was basically that in that proposed swale that it be lined once it's once it's constructed or or um, uh, it's been excavated or, you know, I think it's going to be done by hand, but that it be lined with landscaping fabric and stabilized with some sort of a stone that's large enough that it's not just going to wash out in the rainstorm um, and to prevent that from, you know, scouring out and causing additional erosion and sedimentation into the wetland. And then the second comment was um, relative to the comment that Andre, ma Andre made, which um, a condition to allow additional hardening along the side of the um, bog bridging, which I would recommend a landscape fabric and stone at maybe one to two foot strip along the side of the um, bog bridging. And that's basically because there there was observed significant amount of um, mountain bike activity back there, which is um, permitted on the site and it's going to continue on the site and what will likely happen is that as soon as those bog bridges are put in the mountain bikes are just going to go to the side of the bog bridging and so it would give them a stabilized surface um, along the side of the bog bridging that they could actually traverse that isn't going to further damage rut and um, destroy the wetland further um, so that was recommended as a as a mitigation measure and and secondary to that if the if and when DCR is using the trail for uh, a rescue operation, which they frequently do when people are lost or injured, if they're taking a gator or an ATV out um, and they're basically straddling over that um, bog bridging, they have a stable surface for their tires to basically get over that area without causing damage. So that's that's just a recommendation. You guys can take it or leave it, realizing that um, it's it's something that that we observed in the field and I thought it might provide some stabilization and protection for the wetland. What do you think, Liam? There's some extra mitigation things in there with the extra stone and what do you? Yeah, especially for that swale, uh, it seemed reasonable. And I think adding some strip of gravel along the bog bridges would certainly reduce any potential damage that an ATV or a side-by-side -side might um inflict on on the resource if a, re a rescue needed to happen so i think it would likely um you know reduce impacts even further um be a little bit more work on the trail crews but i think we could make it work cool 
Anyone else in the commission have anything to object to that in terms of the, um, Aaron's recommendation for mitigation? All right, Aaron's making it happen right here because we're going to get a motion. Oh, can we? We can. We can still make a motion, even with these. Yeah. Contingent upon natural heritage. Okay. Yeah. Would it be okay? Where's my motion? All right. Oh, it's not there yet. Oh. Not yet. It goes. It goes. It comes. All right. So, <laughs> I'm going to move the move to approve trail improvements east of 1500 West Street, with the noted conditions including that natural heritage needs um, to have approved all, you know, all conditions. That was not well said, but you know Second. what I mean. <laughs> we got it. Boom. Laura first. Uh, <laughs> Michelle second. Voice vote, Cameron. Aye. Alex. Aye. Andre. I recuse. I'm a DCR employee there. Copy. Laura. Aye. And uh, Michelle. Aye. And I for Fletcher. Andre recuse. Okay. I'm just getting yeah. this for my notes. Sure, okay. Yeah, make sure you get that. Hey, um, thanks, Liam. Thanks, Ward. Thank you. Thank you very much. See ya. All right. Freddie, we're all set here, right? Put your hand up. Yeah, well, just gonna move on. Um we're gonna move on to our request for determination. That was a 7.45 item. So we're ready to be cheat sheet. All right, it's public, this public meeting is now called to order. Uh, this meeting is being held as required for provisions of chapter 131, section 40 of the general laws of the Commonwealth and act relative to the protection of the wetlands as most really amended in article 3.31, wetlands protection of the town of Amherst general bylaws. Okay, Beth, you are here. Crossbrook. Um, five minutes. Hello. Hi. Five minutes. Absolutely. I think you could do it. <laughs> um, I'm Beth Wilson. I'm the I'm an environmental scientist with the Department of Public Works here in Amherst. I'm back again. I was at the last meeting and presented to you guys a project that we want to do on Crossbrook. Uh, Lane, it's a small water treatment system that we want to put into a manhole. Um, so the project, I'll just a little summary. I know, okay, five minutes, five minutes. That's right. Well, um, you know. We're, we're... <laughs> we need to install a new manhole. That's part of the project. And then we need to do trenching to uh, put an electrical conduit to the manhole. And then this little water treatment system is going to sit inside the manhole. Um, and so after last meeting, I think the things that the ConCon brought up was one, moving the trenching from the north side of Crossbrook to the south side of Crossbrook. And that's to um, protect some of the trees because there was some big trees on the north side and a lot of roots that would have gone where that trench line went. And that that is fine. Um, I can bring up the new plan. I think, Aaron, did you share it with? Yes. Commission? Yep. And I can I can put it on the screen. I'm just sizing it right now. So. Oh, thanks. Yep, yeah, so we basically just removed the uh, entire lease area to the south side of Crossbrook Road and moved the trench line so that it comes along um, right basically next to, to the south side of the road. And that works out a lot better. There's a lot, you know, barely any routes along that whole stretch there it goes through a little gravel parking area um but i think as i said at the last meeting all ground surfaces will be restored to their original my cat um to their original so the areas that are grass will be seeded if the, the gravel parking area we will resurface that with gravel so it's back the way it was and all paved areas will get repaved too so that was one of your comments um, last time. And the other was to provide a dewatering plan. Um, and I think, you know, I doubt we're gonna need the dewatering um, for the trenches because they're only gonna be about 18 inches deep. But I think with, with the manhole is where um, it would be a good idea to have a dewatering plan. Um, so this schematic just shows basically we would be putting a pump um, 
a simple pump down into the excavation for the manhole. We'd have hosing that goes to um, what I call like a, a dewatering bladder, um, which I think down below there's a quote for one that we, we've bought before. Um, and then hose coming out of that, which then we would kind of set up a little hay bale with a, with a tarp for just water to come out of there just to slow the water so there isn't any erosion um, for the discharge. And I think we're looking to put this sort of southeast of where the manhole is. I went out to the site and looked and, and I think there'll be plenty of room in that grassed area for the excavation and for our, um, our stockpile storage area. And then also sort of to the southeast, there'll be room for this whole dewatering area. But well, that's actually, that's option two over there. I'm thinking, see, there's the manhole and kind of to the south of the manhole. The manhole will be done before the trenching. In this area, there's like a kind of a grassy area in this vicinity. Yeah, even where the okay. trench is itself, sort of right in there, mm -hmm. it's, it's been, there's plenty of room. Um, and, and I think I propose that if, well, it's going on, if there isn't enough room, we could move it across the street to that, that first area that you, where you put some circles. But, so that is the dewatering plan. And, and just, I just wanted to note that the reason for the requested change was because the, originally the, um, the line was proposed to go along, I guess it's the north side of the, of Crossbrook, and there's dozens of mature, very large trees that are right up against the road, and we were concerned that that would basically, the trenching would basically kill all of their root systems, so moving it set to the south side protects those trees, and there wasn't a whole lot of vegetation there, and then the dewatering is just because there's likely a high groundwater table there, so just trying to you know, once they're doing the trenching, if they need to dewater the trench or the um, area where, for the manhole, um, that would provide, um, it's it's a, you know, contingency in case, when, you know, it's filled up with water and they need to pump the water out to function for the installation. Yep. Great. Thank you, too. Um, anything from the commission on the new revisions? No. Um, we'll open up to the public. If there's anybody who has any questions or comments about this project within our jurisdiction, two minutes, please state your name and your address. Or raise your hand. So I'm pulling in Sarah Matthews, who raised okay. her hand. Yep. There we go, Sarah. You're muted. Hi. Sorry. Hopefully I joined properly. Oh, we got you. <laughs> um, thanks. I'm Sarah Matthews. I live on 95 Crossbrook. And um, First, I just want to publicly thank Beth for how much she's listened to the, our, our association and our neighbors and been responsive. So thank you very much, Beth. Um, and I just have a question about that. I can't really tell from the plan, um, but is the trenching still going to run on the outside of Crossbrook versus within it? And is it going to be on the Ice Pond Wood side? Yes. Yeah, yes to both those things. We're, we're gonna try to avoid the pavement. So go to the south side of Crossbrook, not um, affect the actual pavement of Crossbrook. And it's all on Ice Pond Woods property. Great, thanks. I just couldn't tell. That was all, thank you very much. Okay, got it. Thanks, Sarah. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, if we have nothing else from the commission of the public, um, sorry, so, I'm being distracted. Uh, I did draft um, a, a, a standard orders of conditions for the request for determination of applicability. Um, and those are in your packets as attachments one and two. I don't know if you guys want to go through all of the conditions or just reference the attachments. They're very sort of a, a standard boilerplate for, for example, um, erosion control inspections. Um, and making sure that vehicles aren't crossing through wetlands during construction, you know, it's 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 all sort of our standard um, language that we use for permits. But um, I didn't have any other specific project specific conditions beyond that. I don't believe. Um, okay. 
but I can pull up the, if you want to well, pull up me, the attachments, we can. I could ask uh, Beth, do you want to see the, um, our, our, the order conditions for this motion or would you mind if we just reference the attachments? Um, but if you want to hear them, we can do that. It sounds like if there aren't any um, sort of project specific ones, then, then I'm, I'm good because I, I know the general conditions. And I know you guys know each other, so there's going to be some <laughs> communication back and forth anyway. Um, yep, sure okay. will. <laughs> okay, so I think um, commission members, if you want to just make a motion, just reference the, um, the attachments for the um, standard boilerplate or conditions. I move to issue a positive determination under the town of Amherst Wetlands Protection Bylaw checking box five, negative determination under Wetlands Protection Act checking box three with attachments with conditions specified in attachments one and two. Seconded. First, uh, Cameron, second. Voice vote, Andre. Aye. Alex. Aye. Laura. Laura. Uh, Michelle. Aye. Aye. Oh, I got him. I got Laura. I got Michelle. Uh, Cameron. Aye. And I for Fletcher. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Beth. No problem. Thank you. Um, thank you, Beth. Have a good night. You. Okay. Um, that's we did the business. So, um, Aaron, you you don't uh, apologize again, but thanks for please send us a reminder to um, the MOU with the um, DPW for everyone to have comments for you by the next meeting. Microphone, yep. Fletcher. What's that? Yeah, that's right. Just Microphone. Microphone, yes. Get your comments in for the uh, uh, MOU for DPW by next meeting, everybody. So the only thing we didn't do was a motion to oh. um, continue the SWCA hearing. So it's oh, very simple, but that's the last item we need to do. Move to continue the public hearing for 46 Bering Street to May 24th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Second. And uh, Michelle and Andre with a second. Voice vote, Cameron. Aye. Alex. Aye. Laura. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Uh, Andre. Aye. Fletcher. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> yes, you're Fletcher. <laughs> that was great. I can't believe we got through all that by nine o'clock. That was really good. <laughs> yeah. Well, help that we drop this one. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Um, okay. Thanks. And you want me to say you want to open up to the public? For the last if there's any yeah. public comment yeah we have to for every hearing we have to just make sure there's no public comment okay excellent <laughs> um thank you very much everyone um powering through it was a little oh, difficult there there's oh, a okay, we got one barbara if you want to um we'll get you in here you can raise your hand and just state who you are and where you live can we watch Friday Night Lights? <laughs> All right, Barbara, you're here. You just need to unmute. Yep. So um, I just wanted to ask, I was at the Tan, I, I sat in for the Tan Brook. Was that the one you're continuing? Yes, sorry, we had to continue because we requested more information. Um, I apologize, you must have missed the announcement. We made a number of announcements. Um, yes, it is being continued to uh, the next meeting, May 24th for okay. 7.30. Um, I'm sorry. And the reason was that. because you, you people asked for more information. Correct. Well, I specifically yeah. asked for additional mitigation measures on the site to be incorporated into the plan set. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be heard at the next meeting. Um, that's, that's, okay. they just so needed additional they, time. They put something in, it wasn't quite satisfactory yet. And so you asked for it to continue. It's not they who asked for it to be continued. Okay. Correct, correct. Just wanted to understand a little bit better. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. All right, have a good night. I think we did all other business too. Yes. Can I just say something real quick? <clears throat> Sorry, yeah, <laughs> one minute. I was just noting that there's like two things that came up with accessibility of trails and I just want to keep it in the mind of commissioners like how people use trails maybe near more like population centers or um, older people or people with less stability may need wider bog bridging but 
those are big users of Amherst Trail. So I guess when we can incorporate that into the Amherst Trail system, maybe we should just keep it in mind. That's all. There's two good points raised today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Totally. If we're all set, we're just going to need a moment. <laughs> I move to <laughs> adjourn <laughs> at 9.03. Okay. Second. All right. Voice vote, Andre. Aye. Alex. Aye. Laura. Aye. Laura, thank Aye. you. Michelle. Aye. Cameron. Aye. And I for Fletcher. Great job, guys. Nice yeah. work, Fletcher. Yeah. Well, thanks. I'm not sweating or anything. Yeah. Good going, um, everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See you the next meeting. Enjoy Raiders of the Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Good night. Bye.